Well, the new year brings a new minimum wage to people nearly in half of the country anyway. Two dozen states, in fact, are raising wages, with some entering double digits. New York City going as high as $15 an hour. But 21 states are sticking with the federal standards set in 2009, which is $7.25. The New York Times editorial board has something to say about it. It is calling on Congress to raise that number, writing, quote, the current minimum rises only when Congress is in the mood. As a result, the purchasing power of the federal minimum wage has eroded by nearly 40% over the last half century. Joining me now, Alfredo Ortiz, president and CEO of the Job Creators Network. Um, do you see any issue with raising this, the minimum wage? And does it surprise you that there are still states that have a minimum wage of just over $7 an hour? You know, it's, it's interesting, right? So like you said, 24 different states basically yeah. by the end of this year are going to have increases in their minimum wage. But when you really step back and think about what these minimum wage jobs are, they're really entry-level jobs for really entry-level participants into our economy. So a lot of it really focuses on folks who are you know, in the teen range up to 20 and stuff like that. I think the real focus should be on those who are 25 and over, for example, who are still making that minimum wage. That's the real concern, but that is a very manageable issue in this country. Julie, there are about 160,000 people that fall in that category. Mm -hmm. So you kind of are addressing the right problem, but with the wrong solution. I don't think that minimum wage increase is the way to go. It's not an affordability issue because we're all happy that we're seeing right. wage inflation happen, especially at the bottom right now. 25%, the bottom of 25% are seeing a 7% increase in terms of their wages. Right. Um, so we're happy happy to see that. But you know what's going to end up happening is you're going to push small business owners to find different ways, different models, different business models, because they can't to get actually cheaper afford it. Yeah. Well, you know, when you think about technology, for example, just 10 years ago, how much was a big plasma TV or those big widescreen TVs? There were thousands of dollars. Right. Now they're a couple now, hundred now bucks. Now they're a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. So you can use technology really to offset some yeah. of these entry level jobs. Um, and that's okay. the big concern. You know, the New York Times, you know, it points out the fact that people need a raise and, and, and we're always going to hear. Nobody's ever right. happy with, with with the minimum. Um, but they also say that there is a risk in raising the minimum wage. And, and that's what I, I want to read from on the editorial right. and then have your yep. reaction. I want to know what the real risk is in raising the minimum wage. Um, it is possible that a national $15 standard would produce the kind of dam uh, damage critics have long predicted. The Congressional Budget Office puts the potential increase in unemployment somewhere between zero and 3.7 million people. Workers may be most vulnerable in areas where prevailing wages are relatively low. You are nodding your head. Do you agree? Yes, I mean, that's exactly it. Almost 4 million jobs could be potentially lost because of this federal $15 minimum wage. Wow. And it's really not, like I said, it's not really helping the people that need help. What we love to see, we actually have something that's called the Fight for 50, $50,000 per year jobs. These are HVAC technicians, journeymen, plumbers, because we actually have a skills gap issue in this country, not a wage gap issue. And when you think about where most of the funding, by the way, for this fight for 15 is coming, it's coming from the SCIU. They've spent almost $100 million in the past six years funding this initiative to still have only 1.5% of the food mm -hmm. service workers unionized. This is a really big union push, quite frankly, to get right. people more unionized, get more members. That's really the issue here. We already are seeing wage gap, excuse me, wage increases mm -hmm. because of a great economy that, you know, thanks to lower taxes and less regulation, we're seeing a red hot economy. There's seven million unfilled jobs today. Yeah. So we can we can find ways of getting folks, like I said, to fall into probably most likely have no fault right. of their own into this bucket of 25 and over. Right. They're the ones that really need the help. And I'm concerned about what's going to happen with those those training jobs that really mm -hmm. have these training wages. You know, they that's say the, if it ain't broke, today. don't, fix, don't it. fix it. So that's you look right. at the economy, you look at the incredible unemployment and the jobs numbers, and you wonder: yeah. Does Congress ever get involved when, yeah. with an economy? <laughs> strong as ours. Yeah, right. Run, run fast, fa fast and furious when Congress gets involved in anything like this. Right. Let, this let, let the economy take care of itself and small business owners really that have two thirds of new job growth right. is in the hands of small okay. business owners. They know what, what they're doing here and they really are very concerned about these kinds of minimum wage increases. Right. Alfredo Ortiz, thank you very much. Thank Great you, to see you. Happy, happy, New Year. happy New Year to you.